This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We've not come here this morning to grumble and cry. That's right. We've come here to give praise and glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord Jesus, as always, it is an honor to come to your house. It is an honor to be in your presence. We are so grateful for this time in which the, the saints can come together in one place, in one mind, and in one accord for the sole purpose of giving glory and honor and praise to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We love you, Jesus, and we're going to begin this service with just telling you we love you with all of our hearts. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. You're worthy of all honor and all praise. You're worthy of all glory. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your being here. No, oh Lord, just go around through the congregation and minister to each and every one through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Have your way in our midst today. Holy Spirit, we are ready for a divine interruption anytime. Anytime you have something else in mind other than our form, then Lord, have your way. We just love you today and give you praise. Let us leave here this morning saying, it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. Everybody said, Amen. 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 The psalmist wrote in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord only when I'm feeling good. What do you say, sir? All the time. At all times. Feeling good or not feeling good. I will bless him. His praise shall continually. When the phone rings and it's a salesman, his praise shall continue. Amen. When it's a spam call, his praise shall. I'll say it aside a while. So I get rid of this guy shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, magnify. Oh, yes. Magnify oh, yes. the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Amen.
pray. Glory in the highest. Peace, goodwill to all men. He makes us complete. Yes. Amen. Complete.
waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. Amen. Out of the miry clay. How many has ever played in a mud puddle? <laughs> Life's not complete till you play in a bus. I saw a cartoon the other day. A little boy came in to mommy and said, I need a glass of water. My mud puddle's drying up. <laughs> this guy was in a big mud puddle. He said, He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet, hallelujah, upon a rock. And establish my steps. He had put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Hallelujah. Many will see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Amen. Sing it with me this morning. He brought me out.
you been saved? Amen. Aren't you glad he came? Hallelujah. Oh, aren't you glad he paid the debt? Hallelujah. Oh, my. Hallelujah. That was a debt I couldn't pay for the Amen. Amen. That's a debt none of us could pay. Only Jesus. <coughs> Stand and sing and sing.
I take the bread that is on the table tonight. He said to his And I bless it. And I break it. Because from now on, it will now represent my broken body. Oh, oh my.
we remember Sister Bessie this morning. We don't know if she'll be with us all week or not. But we're grateful for your strength. Strengthen my sister, Lord, Sister Thomas, Brother Thomas and the family. Be with them in a very special way. Encourage their hearts. Lord Jesus, Brother Russell that has had COVID, now out of the hospital but still in quarantine, touch him with your presence. Bring healing, strength to his body. We pray, Lord, for Sister Dee. We pray for Sister Baker. We pray, O oh Lord, for Garney, the Elm, my sister Dorcas, Sister Wes, Sister McIntyre, who has the food. We pray that you'll minister with your presence and grace. Encourage their hearts. Lift them up, O oh Lord. Sister Sharon, that is not here this morning, be with her. Pray, Master, that you'll minister to each and every need. Any that we have missed, oh, Lord, reach out to them. Bring your healing power and presence to bear on their lives. By the authority of your holy name, Jesus Christ. Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Praise Lord. We ask the Lord to bless the offering and time that you have placed in the box. Thank you for your faithfulness in you. Thankful in sharing with the house of the Lord.
with fever. And uh, I don't even know if mom knows this. But um, I have a terrible fear of heights. And some of the dreams would involve me going to the very top of a skyscraper that wasn't finished. So I'm looking out at beams and things. And that was terrifying. And one time there was just <laughs> a hand, imagine, that just picked me up kind of by the scruff of my neck and hung me out over the side. Ooh, frightened. But he left me there until I got the message. Trust me. Trust me. That was a lesson I learned pretty well. And uh, I've also learned that when you trust him, you begin to see things differently. And you have a hope that other people don't have because you're not scared anymore. I mean, not that you don't. You know, not that things don't impact you. You don't go through life as a Christian, you know, oblivious to the struggles of the world, but they don't break you down. <laughs> they don't break you down if your trust is secure. And um, last part of the segue here is, as I've learned all this, and I see, as we all do, the difficult times coming for us as Christians, I seem to have a reverse, maybe it's the rebel in me <laughs> that's always been there, that instead of feeling sad about it or, or burdened down by it, I get happy. We're going to be the only people who know what's going on and know how to survive. We're going to be We have what nobody else has. Yeah. We have the joy. We, joy. And that's I can't tell you, when I'm driving to D.C. a couple days a week, my radio is blasting, and I'm just as happy. And the, the Lord is just telling me, rejoice, rejoice. You're going to make it through this. You, Praise you, the Lord. You Christians you who love me, you are the light of the world. Don't let this steal your joy. Don't let it steal your joy. And so some of my music now is... Well, I to reflect my joy. <laughs> so when you're ready, Nathan, I'm, I'm ready. It's a little different. Gird up. Here it comes. <laughs> Do his good. 
When I hear people talking about working for the Lord in the church, I normally hear things like, I can't teach. I can't work with children. Huh? I don't know how God could ever use me. I have no talents. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, I have so many talents. I, I just, I, I can't determine where I could be used and apply them all that. <laughs> Usually when we put out a plea or a bulletin for workers, for the Lord and workers in the church, oh, I don't think I can do that. Guess who he's looking for? Mm -hmm. The Corinthians here have become divided in their congregation about which preachers they liked. Anybody? Anybody here have a favorite preacher? Yeah? I hear I like Brother So-and-so on television. I listen to him. I like this one or that one. That happened in the Corinthian church. It was before TV. They got, they got to listen to the Apostle Paul. Then Apollos, a very scholarly man, came through and preached. Some followed after him. Other ones liked the Apostle Peter. I mean, just tell it like it is. Others liked Paul. Others still said, well, I don't follow any of them. I just follow Jesus. And so... Paul was reminding them, you're divided in your, your thought process about following this preacher or that. So there's division in the congregation. But he said to them, not too many had come from among the wise, the powerful, or the noble. Therefore, they had no excuse for acting snobbery. Amen. Or criticizing or ignoring others. They were only what God had made them. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Their knowledge, rank, and power did not attract God. That's right. Such things would not now secure any special favors from God. They were no more. They were great, or they had wonderful knowledge. Didn't attract God's attention. Every church and every believer needs to take this message seriously. And they need to take this passage of, of Scripture to heart. Amen? Amen? One of the most tragic characteristics of the modern society if that we now live in is pride and self-sufficiency. Right. Yep. We are humanistic yes. in our society. Yep. But God calls simple and humble people. Hallelujah. Amen. Note the word chosen here. The fact that men do not save themselves, but God saves them is stressed Three times in the words calling and chosen. God is the one who takes the initiative to save mankind. Yes. Man cannot save himself. Yes. Somebody walks in the door of the Emmanuel Chapel, they come in, well, I'm the most noble bishop so-and-so from here and there and yonder and I'd say, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> God's looking for the 
people he can mold and make and use Amen. in his way. You see, it is God who does not call many outstanding people. Look at most of the great preachers down through the centuries. They started out very humble. That's right. Started out very meager. It is God who does call the simple and the humble people to do His will and accomplish His work Amen. in the body of Christ Amen. and in the world. The point to see is this. God's choice is not arbitrary. With Not without reason. He knows why He chooses the simple and the humble over the outstanding. God has His reasons and He explains His reasons in this passage that no man, no flesh should glory in His presence. Amen. It just doesn't fit well, not even with me. Think about God. Yeah. Somebody comes around tooting their own horn. Hello. Amen. I like that individual who comes around and says, well, whatever position you have available, I'm willing to work. That's right. I'm eager to work. Yes. I want to do something for Jesus. I want to be, in, be involved in the work of the church and the house of God. And uh, you, whatever you give me. I was asking Brother Pine this morning where he got called to the ministry. And he was telling me in Germany. And he told the pastor when the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him he needed to get more involved. Uh, and uh, he, said, he told the pastor, he said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Scrub the toilets, uh, sweep the floor, whatever it is. Uh, but I just want to do something for God. Amen. Yes. Amen. God's looking for that kind of spirit. In the book of Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 16 through 20 is where the Lord calls his disciples. going around and just beginning his ministry. And so here is the, the call that he gives out. He gives us a look at who God is looking for. Jesus selects 12 disciples. He wants to use these men to build his future church. Think about this now. The church that he is about to start will last for well over 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. We've been here 41 years. <laughs> My goodness, we haven't even scrapped the surface yet, have we? <laughs> but he is looking at building a church that will reach the entire world. Amen. Amen. Be worldwide. Carry his message. The gospel, the good news to every person on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Before he returns to establish his millennial reign and kingdom for a thousand years here on the earth. That's who he's looking for to start this vast organism that is going to bring his message to the entire world. He's looking for 12 men. When you read this, you see that Jesus called simple men. Yes. No, they were not religious leaders. Not one of them was a scribe. Not one of them was a Pharisee. Not one of them came from the Sanhedrin court. He was not looking for powerful men. Not the political leaders of the nation and the ruling body. He didn't go to the Sanhedrin and say to the Sanhedrin, I want you men to follow me. I'm going to establish a church and I want to use you. Not one. He didn't 
choose any of the priestly or ministerial professions. You know, those guys with the long robes and the little things around the bottom of it that went around the top. Holy am I, holy, holy, holy am I, bow down to me. No. He didn't choose one of them. None of them that felt like they were God's chosen. He didn't choose any students in the schools of higher learning. One. Very simply, they were ordinary men, simple laymen engaged in the affairs of life, just like all the laymen of their day. Having said this, however, a question needs to be asked if these men were just ordinary people. Why did Jesus call them instead of calling the gifted? I would have thought he would have been further down the road to call the ones that know how. But no, the answer lies in some very special qualities that these disciples had. They had some qualities he saw that he didn't necessarily see in the gifted ones and the religious leaders and the powerful men. One of the first things that Jesus noticed that all of the disciples of Jesus were industrious. They were hard working men. Jesus saw Simon and Andrew casting a net into the sea. A little further up the lake, he saw James and John, his brother, mending their nets. They were busy men. They were industrious people. So Jesus is not looking for lazy, slow-moving, sloppy, nonchalant, disinterested, uncommitted work. He doesn't want people that are lazily living off of welfare. Come on, Amen. Amen. Spiritually. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. There are those that come in every Sunday morning, they button their middle button, sit down in the seat, and say, Now feed me, preacher. <laughs> and they never do a thing but sit there and say, Feed me, preacher. They're the first ones to say, I don't like those songs. <laughs> Hello. Amen. 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 They never get involved. They're there just to take in. God's looking for, as he shows us here, ill hard-working, industrious individuals. Compare the call of Amos. Then answered Amos in Amos 7, chapter 7, 14 and 15. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son. But I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. God didn't go to the school of prophets. He didn't go to the big prophets in town. He went to this fellow that was taking care of the sheep. But taking care of the goats out at the pasture field. He was looking at this guy who was picking up sycamore fruit. And he said, I want to use him and call him to go and prophesy to the children of Israel. Then there's that call of Elisha. In 1 Kings 19, the prophet wrote and said, So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. Get the picture. There's 12 yoke of oxen. 
One up here, one behind him, one behind him, a yoke behind him, has two oxen in a yoke. So there were 12 of them stretched out across the field. And the last guy back here plowing with his yoke of oxen, the 12th man, was Elisha. And Elijah came on the scene, the great prophet of God, the man of God. And Elijah was looking, and he looked out across the field. Who did he pick to throw his, uh, his uh, mantle on? He picked Elisha. He was out there plowing with a yoke of oxen, walked up behind him, threw his mantle on him, and said, God wants to use you. Amen. Woo! Glory. Look out. Look out. You're not going to walk in this door one day and somebody's going to throw a man on you and say, Hey, God wants to use me, me, me. Hallelujah. You remember the story of Elisha and how God used him. Compare the call of Saul of Tarsus. Man who was anything but lazy. He said, therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I'm telling you, wherever Paul went, things happened. He didn't just sit around in his lazy boy twiddling his thumbs and said, God, I hope somebody comes by so that I can talk to him. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He was a bad. He said, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He's looking for people who roll up their sleeves uh, and get down to business. Uh, they're sinners to be saved. They're times to be conquered. Uh, they're snakes to be thrown in the fire. Hallelujah. They're jail doors to be opened. Uh, ah, there is a, a singing chorus to be sung uh, at midnight in the inner prison. Uh, I want to do everything I can do for the glory of Almighty God. Are you getting the picture? Amen. God doesn't want lazy people. Amen. Amen. What was that? Hallelujah. God doesn't want lazy people. Amen. Hello? Amen. Shout, shout, shout for can't control. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to come to church and sit down. And you feed me, and the, the choir, and, the, and you all sing, and just bless me. And then I want to go home and just be all blessed, 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 blessed. Don't ask me to do anything in the church. God's not. He'll let you sit there all through your life. If you want to be a lazy Christian, amen. Amen. Did he let you sit there and soak it all in? But when you get up before him, mm -hmm. and he says, where's your works yeah. that you've done? Oh, wood, hay, and stubble. Oh. I've saved you, but by the skin of your teeth. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. Note what Jesus said about working. He said, For the Son of Man is a, as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. He wanted his servants to be busy. I worked on some public jobs, and when the boss wasn't around, some of the guys I worked with, I couldn't find them. <laughs> and I needed help in putting petitions up and doing this work and getting it done. Then you couldn't find them no place. They were out back someplace. 
smoking a cigarette or talking and just, you know, having a big old time. Boss wasn't around. Mm -hmm. The Lord is watching. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. This boss of this church always has his eye. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. He, he expected his servants to work. In Luke 19, Jesus said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Are you occupying? Oh, Caleb said to Joshua after Moses was gone, Give me this mountain. I'm 80 years old, but I'm going to take this mountain in hand. I'm only four years away. We're going to hang in there until. Amen. God expected Jesus, expected the servants to be busy, to occupy, to keep things going. The disciples of Jesus, not only were they hard-working men and industrious, but they were visionary men. Men who were looking for the Messiah and ready to follow Him no matter the cost. Amen? Amen. This was the quality that distinguished the disciples from many others. Some lay persons possessed uh, the other qualities of the disciples, but uh, as do many in every generation. But this particular quality was few found in few and far between. Visionary, wanting to do something, wanting to follow. Wanting to be busy for the Lord. Looking for the Messiah to come. When we come into the house of God, are we always watching? When we get, get up on a Monday morning and head for work, Lord, I'm watching for you today. This may be the day, and while I'm watching for you, I'm going to be talking to others and doing the work of the kingdom. Amen? The fourth quality was a willingness to sacrifice all in order to follow Jesus. Many were looking for the Messiah, but few were actually ready to follow Him. As soon as He called them, they dropped their nets and followed after Jesus. They were willing to make the sacrifice. If a, if a few, if any others, pay the cost of giving up their businesses and immediately following Jesus. Remember, some of these guys just walked away from their income. They didn't even stop to say, well, how am I going to get money? What am I going to do for a living? All they heard was, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And they dropped it all right there and left and followed after Jesus. Few people have a strong vision, a vision so strong that they are willing to pay any price to follow Jesus, giving up their profession or business, home or environment, family or friends is just too much. It cost too much. They lack the vision of these hard-working, industrious men who were ready to follow Christ. A lot of people today, if Jesus were to come by and knock and say, follow me, they say, oh, wait a minute. I, I've got to go straighten things up first in my bank. I've got to do this. I've got to do the other thing. I, I can't leave right now. I maybe after I get everything set up. These men walked away from it all. Right there on the spot. Here's the Messiah.
Messiah, I will follow him. If Jesus comes knocking on your heart's door, I don't care who you are, I don't care how old you are, I don't care what for shape you're in, amen, if he comes and picks you and chooses you, then it's be ready. Amen. Be ready. Amen. Amen. Oh my. He that loveth father and mother more than he, me, is not worthy of me. This is what Jesus said. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. I'm telling you what, if Jesus puts a calling on your life and he says, come follow me, you, there's more for you to gain than there is for you to Amen. lose. That's right. Amen. Are we willing? That's the question this morning. Who is God looking to use? Are we willing to say yes to the Lord? Are we willing to say yes to God? Are we willing uh, to give up it all, give up everything? Or we say, God, that's not my way of doing it. I can't, I can't be that. I can't do that. Lay that up to God. Just follow Him. Amen. 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 Think about it. Jesus calls a person to work to a life of work, not to a life of ease and comfort. He calls a person to invest his life, not to waste his life. Right. How many want to invest in a good stock? <laughs> All right. I've got just the one. <laughs> Amen. Follow Jesus. Amen. When he calls, be ready to lay it all down. Jesus said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me, for whosoever will save his life will lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall save it. I would rather have eternity with God than to spend eternity with my stuff. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? Think about it. Note the primary call is to become fishers of men. Not to become teachers, preachers, counselors, administrators, builders, fundraisers, or anything else. Yet how easily we obscure and camouflage the evangelistic ministry of the church with those things. Lord, I just want to follow you. Amen. I just want to do your bidding. I just want to do your will. Here I am. Send me. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Simple. Follow me. Teach people what I have taught you. And last of all, the disciples of Jesus were cooperative men. They left all. They followed Jesus and did as he taught them. They also worked with each other to fulfill the, the, the instructions of Christ. Disciples of Jesus were successful, but sacrificial. Considerate men, Zebedee and his sons, James and John were successful businessmen. James and John followed after Jesus, left Dad behind. But before they left, they made sure Dad was taken care of. They got servants to work for him. And then they struck out, left it all, 
behind to follow Jesus. Are we at that point in our lives? Jesus is looking for people He can use. God is looking for people He can use in Emmanuel Chapel. We're going to need the, the folks to teach children's church. We're going to need folks to, that will step in and, uh, and take up of the slack when things open up again. We're going to need people who are willing to say, I'll go testify of the goodness of God. I'll be a vessel for God to you. Regardless of the cost, regardless of the need, be like James and John and step out by faith, trusting in the Lord. These are the kinds of disciples Jesus is looking for at Emmanuel Chapel. Amen? Amen. Amen. Industrious, hardworking, visionary, ready to follow Christ. I guarantee you that if I stood up here and said, if you'll go 50 steps out here from the church and 10 steps that way and dig 10 feet, you will find gold. We'd have people out there with shovels all over the place. <laughs> but if I say, the Lord needs a, a Sunday school teacher, the Lord needs a, 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 a children's church teacher, the Lord needs a, a Pioneers for Christ or a Royal Ranger teacher, or the Lord needs this or the Lord needs that, Oh, it would be like pulling teeth. Amen? Are you ready? Amen. How many are ready to Amen. follow Jesus? Amen. How many are ready to follow the Lord? How many are willing to say, Lord, here I am. I'm strong. I'm industrious. I'll work. I'll do what I can. You give me the strength. I'll be what you want me to be. Amen. I'll do what you want me to do, and I'll go where you want me to go. Hit by Lord Jesus. Take care of your people. Share with them right now as they make decisions to be a servant of yours. And help them, O oh Lord, to say, I'm here, Lord. Send me. I'm here. Use me for your glory and for your honor. Yes. We love you, Jesus. Yes. And we pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up and lift up your countenance and give you peace. Amen.